If you guys want to be able to chance to win this giveaway for the Monster Hunter Rise Nintendo Switch Pro Controller and Collector's Edition, be sure to click the link in the description box down below. Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another video for Monster Hunter Rise. And in this one, I want to give you a chance to take a look at all the Switch skills for all of the weapons. If you guys want to unlock them, we uploaded a guide earlier on today on how to do that. But in this video, I'm just going to give you a quick chance to take a look at them. It's not going to be an in-depth review of each of them because we'll be speaking more in-depth about these in the upcoming weapon workshops, which are dropping starting from next week. But today, this is just a chance to show you the cool moves for all the weapons. So if you do enjoy this, a like would be super appreciated and let me know down below which one is your favorite. So starting off with the great sword, in your first slot, you have the option to change your tackle. The first one by default is tackle. So obviously when you're charging, pressing A will allow you to go into that. That allows you to firm incoming attacks. And of course, use that to, uh, you know, cancel parts of your charge. Alternatively, you have guard tackle. This changes it into a slightly slower, but advancing guard animation. And the nice thing about this one is that off the back of this, you can go directly into either the true charge slash or the rage slash, depending on what you have selected. In your second slot, you have the true charge slash. So obviously, if you guys know Greatsword, you'll know this is one of your biggest, heaviest hitting moves. Of course, that comes off the back of the triple charge combo. Alternatively, you can change that into Rage Slash, which, as the game describes, does not match the power of the True Charge Slash. However, if you receive damage whilst you are in this state, whilst you are charging, then uh, it sparks a flame in the user's heart, strengthening their attack. So basically, take some damage, do more damage. As for your third slot, you either have the Silkbind move Hunting Edge, which of course the one that launches you up into the sky, and following the hit, you can then press ZR to go into a Plunging Thrust. Alternatively, you have Adamant Charge Slash, which is a technique that allows you to dash forward and deliver a strong charge slash, and also allows you to withstand knockdown attacks, hardening your body as you dash forth. For the Longsword, in slot number one, you have the Step Slash, which is your standard overhead slash, part of your default combo, and of course, also your draw attack. Alternatively, you have the Drawn Double Slash, which replaces only the draw attack, so Step Slash does still exist in its uh, drawn capacity, but as you unsheath your weapon, you go to the draw double slash, which is not only a double attacking move, similar in animation to the EI slash, but this also has a counter of sorts. It basically allows you to absorb an attack and then go straight into damage. On your second slot, by default, you have the spirit round slash combo. That is your standard spirit combo you'll be familiar with, with longsword. That of course ends in the wide sweeping attack that if it connects, levels up your gauge. Alternatively, you have the Spirit Reckoning combo, which animation-wise is very similar to Brave Longsword from Generations Ultimate. This one changes the last two hits into the Dividing Slash and then the Spirit Reckoning attack. The Dividing Slash, you can input a direction to move forward so you can close the gap, and the final hit attacks more vertically. As for your third slot, you either have Soaring Kick, which is of course the move you use to launch into the sky, and assuming you have Meter Charged, i.e. the glow on your sword, you can then press ZR to perform the Helm Splitter, which of course is your biggest damage move. Or you can press A or X to perform the Plunging Thrust to fill up the inside of the meter to give you an automatic regen. As for the second slot, this is the Silk Behind Sakura Slash, which when it connects with the monster, will slash multiple times, great for elemental builds or status builds. And in doing so, it levels up your gauge. So it's a very easy way to level up the meter. For the Sword and Shield, your default option in slot number one is the Hard Basher combo. This is your standard Shield Bash combo, which, uh, you know, not necessarily the strongest, but does do KO damage. Alternatively, you have the new Drill Slash combo, which is fantastic for element and status, but also does have some great raw damage potential. This will see you plunge your sword into the monster and then rip it out, hitting multiple times. On your second slot, by default, you have the Advancing Slash on X plus A. This is the move you use to, uh, well, advance on the monster. It also provides you with a degree of flinch free, so if you happen to be playing with longsword users, you can then use it without being tripped. Alternatively, you have the sliding slash, which replaces that, and you now slide across the ground, and if you connect with the monster, you will launch up into the sky. From there, you can then go straight into the falling bash or into the weaker slash. And of course, you can also press A in the air just to launch up as you would before. Pretty handy, but of course, it does change your core combo flow. Then finally, on the last slot, you have either the Windmill, which of course is the Silk Bind move, which spins around your blade on a wire, hitting multiple times, but it does give you a massive window of invulnerability, so you can use this reactively if you don't want to be hit. Alternatively, you have Metsu Shoryugeki, which will see you Shoryuken your way into the sky, and if you do this into an oncoming attack, it will see you do more hits and more damage on the way up, and then from there, you can either go into a Falling Bash or into the new Plunging Thrust. 
For the Dual Blades, your first slot is the Demon Flurry Rush. This is the one where if you are in Demon Mode, pressing A will of course allow you to do this Beyblade style attack. Pretty cool, good way of building meter, and that is one of the moves you'll be very familiar with. Alternatively, you can swap that out for Demon Flight, which uh, when you attack, does this overhead sort of slicing attack, and it will launch you up into the sky, and in doing so, that then puts you in a perfect position to either just attack from the air, or perform the uh, Levi style Beyblade down the spider the monster move. So, very useful. Your second option is by default Demon Mode, which of course is a staple for this weapon. You know, you activate that, it gives you uh, increased damage, movement speed, new combos, new options like that. It is a very powerful part of this weapon. Alternatively, you have Feral Demon Mode, which, similar thing, you go into it again by pressing the same button, but this time when you're in this mode, if you dash, you also dish out damage. So it is kind of a useful way to, uh, you know, if you're playing evasively, put in some extra numbers. And then as for your third slot, you either have Piercing Bind, which is an incredibly powerful move for this weapon. You stab a kunai into the monster, and you then attack. After a little while, it will blow up. Plus, it will basically kind of duplicate your damage in multiple locations, so it's a very useful move uh, from a DPS standpoint. Alternatively, you have Tower Vault, which will launch you into the sky. And again, anytime you are airborne with this weapon, it lines you up nicely to be able to perform some of those uh, damaging moves, or the Levi Beyblade move. So uh, when you factor in most of the time, if you want to launch the sky like that, you need to put your weapon away and manually wire bug. This is basically giving you aerial freedom. Next up for the lance, your first slot is actually your Silkbind slot, which is Anchor Rage. So by default, this is the one that allows you to brace and absorb the power of incoming attacks. It's a high risk move, but the more power you absorb, the uh, greater the damage. Basically gives you a damage boost on your lance. Very useful, and you want to make sure you're absorbing the stronger attacks. Alternatively, you have Spiral Thrust. This one, similar thing, it's a uh, lightning fast two-step maneuver. Basically, you need to uh, counter an incoming attack. And then in doing so, it allows you to launch straight into this double thrusting attack. And you can input a direction during the second one to basically influence which direction you go. On your second slot, you either have by default the dash attack, which you can perform by bringing up your shield and pressing X plus A. This will see you charge towards the monster with your lance. This, of course, has been good in the past if you want to uh, stack up or apply elements and statuses. Meanwhile, you can swap that out instead to a shield charge. Similar behavior, you run forwards, but this time with your shield instead, so you can deal KO damage in the process. And then finally, on the last slot, you have the ability to change guard. By default, you have your guard, so holding down ZR brings up your shield to block. Alternatively, you can change that to Insta Block, which uh, at the beginning, whenever you press ZR, will perform this sort of shield wind up animation. It effectively gives you a quick guard point in this position. The timing in the window is quite tight, but if you can perform this and pull it off, you can then perform a cross sweep following this. And also, if you miss this and you kind of mess this up, you do still have your standard guard. So, guard is off the back of Insta Block, but it does change your initial guarding animation. Next up for the gun lance, your first slot is by default charge shelling. So obviously depending on the style of gun lance you play, if you play long gun lance, then uh, charge shelling is of course a lot more applicable to you. However, you can then change that to blast dash. So yes, that does mean of course, if you are a charged shelling playstyle user, uh, then this might not be that handy for you because you have to basically sacrifice that. But blast dash is the awesome move that allows you to do the dumb stuff like this. I love it, it is my favorite thing. And since I'm a normal gun lance player, I don't need charge shelling, so uh, this is great. You hold this down and you blast. You can then link three of these together if you want to. Even if you have a normal type gun lance and you have more shells, it will still only allow you to do three consecutively. But off the back of this, you can of course slam your gun lance down and then go into a full burst combo. In your second slot, you then have your silk bind move. By default, that is hail cutter. That is the move that will launch you up into the sky. I see you come crashing down, and then upon doing that, you can unload all your shells. It also reloads your shells in the process on the way up, so uh, that is kind of handy. However, you then have ground splitter, which can be used both evasively and offensively because the animation itself does have iframes, drags you along the ground, and it then powers up your gun lance, and then all of your shelling attacks do increase damage. So uh, you should definitely be using this because off the back of this move, you can then slam down your gun lance or you can go straight into a worm stake and uh, it's basically just a free damage boost. As for your third slot, you either have quick reload, which of course is by default the ability to uh, reload like this whilst you are either attacking or shelling. Good if you want to uh, quickly reload those shells. And of course, it's a default part of the normal combo. Meanwhile, you can swap to Guard Reload, which input-wise is performed the same way. Off the back of a uh, you know an attack, you can perform the Guard Reload animation. The only difference with this one is that this one will also reload your Worm Stake, whereas Quick Reload just reloads your shells. 
This reloads worm steak and shells, so it is a little bit slower, but if you happen to be playing, say, the charged shelling playstyle, and, uh, you know, you're using things slightly more like that, then this could have some value. I will say if you're kind of more of a normal type gun loss player, it does mess with the flow of your typical combo a little bit. So, uh, you know, use this as you see fit. Next up for the hammer in slot number one, you have the side smash. This is uh, your standard A attack where you basically hit sideways with your hammer. It's not a move that is typically used that much. So uh, you can then swap that out instead for the water strike, which effectively is... A, uh, a counter, guard point, an absorption, however you want to describe it for the hammer. Basically, on this input now, you have a little blue flash when you perform the attack. It allows you to literally absorb an attack so you can do this into danger. And off the back of this, you can then press X or A to perform a uh, follow-up attack. In your second slot for your silk bind, you either have the uh, spinning bludgeon, which of course is the one that allows you to uh, spin your way up into the sky. And if you happen to do this on the monster's head, it is a good KO move. Alternatively, you have the dash breaker, which you would of course seen in one of the newer trailers. This one allows you to basically assume this stance. You can actually hold it down and charge it before you kind of initiate this move. It does have some iframes on the actual animation itself too. And it allows you to dash towards a monster and uh, dish out an attack. And then finally, for the third slot, you have the ability to either have, by default, the charge switch strength. This is the one that you can kind of go into. You begin charging, you switch stances, and this gives you access to some very powerful moves. This does, of course, lengthen your charge time, but this is where some of your strongest hits reside. Alternatively, you can change that to charge switch courage, which uh, decreases your charging levels. So, you know, damage-wise, it is a little bit lower but it does allow you to follow from one charge into another more quickly. So you can have this nice new fancy charge combo. Honestly, I just love the animation for this one. It looks incredibly cool the way it's just kind of swinging the hammer around. So uh, this is cool. For the hunting horn in your first slot, by default, you have the overhead smash on forward X and A. This, of course, is one of your strong single hit moves on your green note. However, you can swap that out for the Melodic Slap, which is in the same input. Instead, it is a wider sweeping attack that uh, doesn't deal as much damage, but does have good KO potential. So uh, if you want to stun the monsters and lean more into the KO playstyle, this is useful. In your second slot, this is where you can change your performance style. So by default, you have the new performance mode, which allows you to play your songs simply by queuing up two consecutive notes, basically by attacking twice with one of your buttons. You play the song automatically. Alternatively, you have Echo Mode, which is similar in comparison to the uh, traditional Monster Hunter experience for Hunting Horn, where you can play a note on the stave and then press ZR to manually recite it. The only difference this time is it is heavily simplified. You just need to play one note and then recite it, and that basically plays your song. Then for your third slot, you either have Earthshaker, which is your incredibly powerful silk by move that basically sort of stabs a wire into the monster. And then when you play the song, it dishes out incredible damage. This is one of your highest damage moves for this weapon. However, you do have Bead of Resonance, which is your option to deploy a uh, kind of cocoon, a wire bug cocoon on the ground. And in doing so, whenever you recite, it dishes out sonic waves, which do, you know, moderate damage. However, additionally, it will double up songs, and while it doesn't have too much value on most songs, for things that are single use, like heals, it effectively gives you the ability to kind of encore to a degree. Basically, if you have a horn that has, say, a small heal, then playing it inside a bead of resonance will allow that to basically be a medium heal, it'll double up the song. So it does have some uses. Additionally, if you perform a recital inside the bead, even if your horn does not have attack boost, it will give you the attack up buff. So effectively, you can get an additional attack up song with any horn if you use this move. For the switch axe, your first move is the forward slash in axe mode. This is your standard kind of advancing move. Not hugely strong, but it is of course a nice combo opener and it also does serve as a nice way to transition straight into sword mode. However, you can then change that if you want to into the forward overhead slash. This of course is a slightly longer wind up animation but this does deliver good damage and a subsequent sword mode, if you transition straight from this into sword mode, goes straight into the double slash. So this is also quite nice for, uh, you know, building up the amp state. Secondly, you either have the finishing discharge, which off the back of your element discharge is basically after spamming X, you dish out this hefty explosion. However, you can change that into the compressed finishing discharge, which instead changes the animation like this. And uh, while it is cool, it is worth noting this sends everybody flying in your team switch axe users you're basically the new longsword users because this this is not team friendly 
Finally, for your last slot, you either have Invincible Gambit, which of course is the uh, technique that allows you to surge forward and dish out multiple strikes. You're impervious to knockdowns during this, so it's kind of a good way to get in and begin rushing down the monster. Alternatively, you can change that into Soaring Wyvern Blade, which sees you launch up into the sky and you can then plunge forward and down into the monster with your sword. For the Charge Blade, in your first slot by default, you have the Condensed Element Slash, which of course allows you to take the charge from your shield and apply that to your sword as well, performing this animation. In doing so, you can then dish out some of your file damage from your sword. Of course, this is a very handy move. But you can then change that into the Condensed Spinning Slash. So for those of you guys that missed the Savage Axe Slash, this is not quite Savage Axe Slash as it was before, but behavior-wise, it is comparable. Basically, that sword icon is now swapped for an axe icon, and in doing so, you then have this spinning axe during your axe attacks. You can then also hold down X or A to spin the blade further, more so when you're doing your attacks to dish out more attacks. It's also worth noting that during your X attacks, you can actually build files whilst in the axe state. It's not as fast. It is, you know, kind of slow compared to sword and shield mode, but you can still build them so you can get that flow where you can stay in axe mode for a while and keep your files topped up. In your second slot, by default, you have the Morph Slash, which of course you are used to if you are a Charge Blade user. Standard guard point behavior, changing from Sword Mode to Axe Mode or Axe Mode back to Sword Mode. In these Morph attacks, there are guard points. However, you can change that to the Counter Morph Slash, which are similar behavior, but it changes the animation. This is much more defense focused, so it kind of gives you a bigger window for your guard points. And especially when it comes to going from Axe Mode into Sword Mode, you get effectively a Frame 1 guard point as opposed to before, where you had to kind of time it because of course you had to factor in going from axe into sword before you present your shield. So uh, basically different timings for guard points. Then finally in your last slot you either have counter peak performance which is the uh, counter guard move which you can then use to uh, upon taking damage fills all your files and then this behaves very similar to a guard point in the off the back of this you can go into a variety of different attacks including your super ant element discharge or you have Axe Hopper, which allows you to freely launch up into the sky and then go into an SAD from there. You can also input a direction to basically spin 180 or just influence where you face when you dish out this attack. For the Insect Glaive, let me just tell you guys, this weapon is spicy. They basically just tried to hide all the cool stuff in the demo, right? Insect Glaive, by default, you have the Leaping Slash, which of course is that downward slash leaping attack performed, uh, you know, whilst forward lunging. This is useful for kind of negating knockbacks, but this is kind of a standard high-reaching attack. However, you can change that to the Advancing Round Slash, which is like a spinning top move. This does take some getting used to because, of course, it does replace your draw attack, but this is very useful. It can also be performed with your weapon out by forward and A. And uh, during this spin, you can also effectively absorb an attack. If you take damage during the spin, you're launched up into the sky, which then positions you nicely as an Insect Glaive main to then perform some area of attacks. In your second slot, you either have Tornado Slash by default, which, let's be honest, is one of your strongest moves for the Insect Glaive. So if you're going purely for damage, that is very important. However, you do have the Tetra Seal Slash, which is your new one, which is an attack that delivers four strikes on the spot. So of course, it's kind of a nice elemental or sort of status attack. And one of these hits does also attack with the back of your glaive, which of course then uh, applies some powder. So for powder kinsects, it can lure them in. Keep in mind there's different types of kinsects, they behave differently. So this move will synergize nicely with certain kinsect choices. And then finally, in your third slot, you either have Recall Kinsect, which uh, is the move that allows you to perform an emergency evade and call back your Kinsect in the process. In doing so, it also dishes out some heals, and then when it returns to you, it fills up its stamina. But you then also have Diving Wyvern, which is a fantastic move. This is the one where you launch up into the sky, similar to that kind of like new move they introduced in Iceborn, but now it's tied to a Silk Bind. And uh, performing this allows you to come plunging down into the ground, and it does incredible damage. Plus, you can also perform this standalone whilst you're in the sky, so you don't actually need to factor in the launch with this move. You can actually get yourself up into the air first, and then perform it straight from there. Next up for the Light Bowgun, by default in slot number one, you have your reload, which is pretty standard behavior. This, of course, just allows you to reload your shots, and the time in which you reload, of course, varies depending on the ammo you are reloading. But there is a new elemental reload, obviously, with elemental bullets in mind. This one reloads your shots using a special mechanism. It is a slightly slower reload, but this drastically increases the damage output of elemental shots. So if you're using this specifically for elemental damage, this is a good option. In your second slot, you either have the forward dodge, which is just your standard light bogon roll, standard behavior. 
but you can then swap that out into the quick step evade this is a uh, kind of shorter distance but the recovery time of this is quicker plus if you fire your bullets straight off the back of this it actually does increase the damage of them slightly so uh, this is kind of useful if you want to be say close up to the monster or you just happen to kind of be fighting off the back of an evade pretty handy and then finally, in slot number three, you have the Fanning Vault. This, of course, is, uh, you know, your jumping action that allows you to launch over the monster. And, of course, once you're in the sky, you have a number of different options. You can fire your bullets or you can uh, drop your Wyvern Mines. So uh, that's kind of useful. But you then do also have the Fanning Maneuver, which is an evasive style move, which basically kind of throws out this Tokyo Drift style uh, wire that you can then slide across the ground and you can shoot during this motion. For the heavy bow gun, by default in slot number one, you have your melee attack, which of course is X plus A. Not used that often, to be honest, for this weapon, but that of course is your default selection. Alternatively, you have the tackle, which is basically the greatsword tackle, same behavior, allows you to firm an attack, allows you to kind of just like tackle your way into something, which then is kind of useful because you can then follow up from there. In your second slot, you either have Counter Shot, which is the parrying skill that allows you to absorb an attack and then go into this uh, Counter Shot, which you can then fire out for some big damage. Alternatively, if you want to play and kind of lean into the new charged feature of the Heavy Bowgun, allowing you to charge your shots, Counter Charger then uh, absorbs an attack again, and then following that, it will actually shorten the amount of time needed to uh, fire charged shots. And then finally, in the last slot, you either have Mech Wyvern Snipe, or of course, Wyvern Heart, depending on what you have. Uh, this, of course, is, uh, you know, your ability to fire at your special ammo, but you can then swap that to a slightly less damaging version, but does have healing with it. So if you want to heal yourself in the process, this is an option. And then finally, for the bow in slot number one, you have the power shot, which, of course, is, uh, you know, your regular shot followed by a powerful shot. You press A after a regular shot and you get this uh, power shot. You guys will be familiar with this. But you can then change this into the absolute power shot, which uh, fires out shots with a higher level of charge than usual. It won't exceed your maximum level, but it does cost more stamina and does have a potentially higher stun value on the targets. So uh, this is a nice option. Secondly, you either have the charging sidestep, which of course is the move that you can use to uh, sidestep whilst firing to level up your bow charges. Alternatively, you have dodge bolt, which is kind of like having a sort of guard point to a degree, that sort of blue flash on your attack, because basically if you dodge at the right time, you can then go from uh, an attack into a higher level of charge. It is useful, but it does have a sort of slightly tighter window, so uh, you need to factor this in. But this is kind of a good way to dodge through an attack and kind of keep your, keep your attacks going. And then finally in slot number three, you either have focus shot, which of course is uh, your move where you can leap backwards, and in doing so, you crouch down, and that then basically speeds up your stamina recovery. However, you then have the very powerful aerial aim, which allows you to launch up into the sky. You can then fire your shots downwards. You can get a triple sort of volley off. And following that, you can even plunge down with a melee attack. This is a very strong option for the boat. So there you have it. Let's quick look at all of the Silkbind moves for all of the weapons. Again, we'll be going over them in much greater detail, talking about what they can do, all their sort of hidden features, and just kind of everything you need to know about them when we do the weapon workshops, which are coming very soon. But for the time being, for those of you guys that just want a quick look at all the Silkbind moves, that is what you have. If you want to catch more from us at Arix Gaming, don't forget you can catch the guys 269 Paradise Central and Vestmore streaming over on Twitch weekdays, playing a variety of games. If you guys want to jump in, tune in, watch, and even join in, then make sure you check them out. The links to those are in the description box down below. And of course, you can join the Discord to get involved in all of the discussions.